marriage is so important instead of just being with a man. All right. So, whew. so when I first got married, I was one of those, like, I could make, I could pay my bills. I could pay my telephone bill, pay my automobile bills. <laughs> <laughs> so my husband is not that type of person he does not want um a working career woman that is not what is important to him um but he's going to be on our show um probably uh, next month so he can you can hear it from his own mouth there's a sense of pride when you're dealing with a man okay i'm not talking about boys i'm not talking about um a type personality men, which we're not going to get into, but look it up if you, you know, if it's something that's interesting to you. Um, they like to have a sense, they have, they like to have women who are submissive, who they can work easy with and who are peaceful to be around. I'm talking about men. All right. And a man will know very, 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 very early on, actually, whether or not he wants to marry a woman or not, he may or may not change his mind based on a couple of things that we're going to touch on on YouTube and Patreon, not on Instagram, because Instagram likes to act crazy sometime, and I don't want my information to be lost. So if it, we get, if we lose it here, you just check up on my YouTube channel and you'll get the full enchilada in general terms, of course. So um, a lot of men are not, they're not down for that, that 50-50 life. First of all, do you think that men and women are equal like let's just start there you know is, is that something that is <laughs> if you think that men and women are equal then that's kind of she's she's in there talking about that equality stuff i mean bless gen z's little naive heart <laughs> Oh, they've been fed such a big fat dotted lie because there are physical differences between men and women, right? And I did, I, I didn't, I never thought we would actually be at a point in our society where we actually have to say that there are physical differences between men and women. And those physical differences have difference in results. So there is, there is, there is not equality, but there is probably more equity. You need men and women to continue the existence of men and women and men and women are both equally important for every society and I've learned that by being married with children because what I found about having children and having the ability to say wait until your dad comes home and have everybody just hallelujah I'm an angel I'm an angel I am an angel <laughs> What's going on? Oh my god. So I'm gonna have to stop my video because you're gonna be crying in it. Where is a spot? Sorry guys, but this is very casual. Oh look at what Apollonia won today at the fair. Isn't that cute? Oh so, so when me and my husband were dating, he actually said to me the first time we went out, like, no, you don't pay for stuff. That's my job. You know, that's what the man's supposed to do. The man's supposed to protect and provide. And I was just like, oh, that's so sweet. And it, he almost felt like disrespected because I was trying to like buy him drinks. So he's kind of traditional in that sense. Interesting. Yeah, it's okay. You can ask him. It's very healthy and good for you. <clears throat> Interestingly enough. Um, he's a traditional type man, so that was, for me, okay. sweet and endearing, but it didn't come without a cost, and I'm going to talk about that now. Like, I have to announce when I'm talking about something, right? Like, <laughs> just talk about it down a lot. So, <laughs> the cost that it came at was that I had to be, or have to be, learn how to be a traditional woman. And a traditional woman does not go out, leave her children for someone else to raise so that she can have her career and her degree and her um, social life and her lots of expensive shoes, yeah, which I, I fall deeply into this category. And so 
being married has meant has meant to me that I have had to give up a lot of those things. What do I get in return is the comfort and the pride in knowing that I am the one who is raising my children. I am the one who is fulfilling a duty to my husband, which I will talk about next, but I just want to complete this thought that there is a certain level of sacrifice and responsibility that modern women, myself included, don't have because for whatever reason we've been told that career and making our own money is more important than family and having a, and having um, a husband. And that might not settle well with some people, and that's fine. But what I have found is that the staggering number of women who want both is kind of scary because what this is what happens, right? You're young, you fly, you run about, you have some relationships that don't make any sense, that don't go anywhere, and then you realize that Maybe you're not the youngest person in the club anymore, and maybe you're not as cute or as young as you used to be. And then you're like, maybe I should settle down. And then you realize that you've been in these streets too long. And then you realize you have started to, you, you, you have some bad habits. I'm talking about my situation now, of course. Um, and you, you, you may or may not get lucky, and you get married, and you start to have a lot of problems. Why? Because your body, my body count, it's up there. Um, my I, The things that I thought were important to be a good wife were not important. So I had to relearn things like being able to work and being educated. That's why you see a lot of these women, a lot of these young, stupid, for those of my English speaking listeners, stupid, dumb, blonde, or not blonde, but not blonde, like blonde hair, but like, you know what I mean, Chris? Like, you know. Pendeja, you know? <laughs> there's nothing up there but cotton, and and they get these these amazing, it's not amazing, but they get like really rich men, or you know, because men don't care about that. That's something that they tell you they care about because it makes them look good. Like, yeah, she gotta have a nice person. That they don't care about no personality. They care about three things. Close your ears and pay off. They care about putting it down, you know. The, the, the sex. They care about the food, for the most part. And they care about your silence. They want you to be... That, that really... The last part, the, the <laughs> Chrissy laugh, that really pisses me off because I like to think that me and my man can be friends. And we are friends. You know, we... we we um we have a great synergy where it's like he knows what I'm thinking before I'm even thinking it, even if we're not in the same space. Like I'll be like, man, I would really like a bottle of wine, or I really feel like eating some chocolate, and I'll come home, or he'll come home, and he oh. would have bought that, you know. So we're connected, like we are like soulmates. We like the same things, but if we didn't, it would still be my duty to be a good wife. And I, my generation has been taught that you have to be romantic if you're a man, right? You have to be romantic. You have to be good looking. You have to be fit. You have to be great in bed. You have to be rich. And there, you, you're going to have to give up one of these, boo-boo. You're going to have to just, I, I'm getting turmoil because I listen to this list, which we all have, right? We all have a list. And some of our lists are, a lot of us have unrealistic lists. You know, we could have met maybe somebody who has 85% of those things on our list, but maybe something wasn't on the list. And then we just throw that person down the toilet, flush him with a chaser because of the last 15%. And I think that um, marriage is usually ends up in those cases being a settlement because people realize, okay, I can't have everything instead of a woman realizing that marriage is duty. I hope I've covered everything so far when it comes to the modern woman, like the unrealistic expectation to be in love with your husband. Let me tell you something. Most days in my marriage, it's not about love. It's about duty. It's about 
being friends, but not in the way like you're friends with your <clears throat> with your homegirls. You're friends like you understand the person's needs and that is different for a wife than it is for, hey, moosey, moosey. Um, that is different for a wife than it is for a husband. Like a husband's role is, which this is what we learned in marriage preparation. So the husband's role is to provide and to take care of his children and to lead and to teach responsibility, taking, teaching the kids to take initiative, taking the kids to stand up for themselves and how to problem solve. A woman's job is to support him in that. And I did not want to accept that or even entertain that because I'm a modern woman, okay? <laughs> but how stupid is it to be a modern woman and want a traditional man? So the second thing was I had to like not figure out but relearn what it is my husband needed because now, okay, I'm in love, right? I'm, I have a child with this person. I've built a family with this person. And do you really want to break up your marriage because of your own selfish baseline expectations you know because because he is not like whisking you off your feet in 50 shades of graying you every day you're just gonna end and and women <laughs> i was telling my daughter yes i talked to my daughter like this she's sitting right here um hopefully not taking notes because she's 16 mm-hmm but anyways she <laughs> i was telling her about my friend who left a good man because the sex was bad. And now she's over. Yeah, yeah. This happens all way too many times. Um, but I digress. So how do you become a traditional woman if you want to be a... if How do you become a traditional wife to a traditional man if you're not? The, 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 the short answer to that is that you don't. The long answer to that is that it can is that it can be possible if you're willing to give up certain things, and that's why I start off my sessions with: Is this something you really want? Is it that you want the marriage, or do you want the wedding? Because the wedding is nice, right? That cake, oh my god, the Chodong wedding. Chrissy didn't come to my wedding, but that's okay. I'm not. I'm not mad. I'm not hurt limitation limited spaces <laughs> um but yeah you know like we decided to not have a big wedding because we were planning we knew that finances well he was the one and you know i certain things i had to live with like i didn't have i didn't get an engagement ring with a big rock that i could skate on um um i when i was a professional working woman I had designer clothes, designer luggage. I could travel and eat at expensive restaurants. Um, I don't drink champagne. It gives me a headache. But, you know, I, I was used to a certain type of lifestyle. Many of us working women who have that degree that we have to hug at night because we don't have a man. Um, I'm just saying. So just keep it in perspective. Um, have luxury, but we don't have companionship. And I, <laughs> you know, I don't want y'all to see my wardrobe right now because it looks like I have both. I can explain <laughs> what each one of my shoes costs like ten dollars. I get everything on sale, and I, you know, I wait for sales and I make it happen. And that's what I've had to learn how to do because that's been a sore point in terms of like cooperating. Like we have to live off of what he makes. I make some chewing gum money by teaching art. And now I'm developing my business, not because I want career, but I feel like it's a calling that I have to give back more. And I'm happiest with my family when I do the things that I'm good at. If that were gardening, I would be doing gardening. If that were painting, which as you can see, I, oh, you can't see an Instagram. Hang on a second. You see that? That's a gift though. That's not for sale. But this one here, I did an art class. You know, and I get that I'm, I'm, a, I'm allowed that <laughs> once a week. Um, uh, and that's three. Can you please look at her when you're talking to her? Thank you. Um, once a week for two months, once a year. And that's what I get. Other Outside of that, I go to the gym. I go for coffee. 
<sighs> but I'm used to a much different kind of lifestyle. So that is the first thing. Do you want... Do you, <laughs> I was just talking to a friend of mine about the same thing. Like, do you want to be a wife? Because what you think being a wife is, is not what you think it is. And most of us are not going to meet the... <sighs> Most of us are not going to meet a Christian Grey who's making a hundred million dollars. Why are you shaking your head? I want to ask the two people in this conversation right now. How much money, how many kids do you want to have, right? So write this down. I got to get back to my notes and stop rambling. Yes, Chuck, that's your foot. Very nice. How many kids do you want to have? Let's say you want to have two or three, right? That's the general answer. Okay. You have two or three kids. Let's say the max right now. You have three kids, okay? And you don't you don't want to be you don't want to have to pay um let's say over 10% of the bills, right? So whatever you make is like a gener is a, is a nice sweet contribution to the household. So your your husband's paying 85% of the bills, okay? So you don't pay anything significant, which means if you were working and he were working, y'all would be good. If you stop working, y'all still good. Maybe you won't be able to eat at the Four Seasons or wherever. I don't know. I don't eat. We don't eat out pandemic, you know, whatever. But let's say, okay, I stop work for whatever reason because I'm pregnant or, you know, I have too many recitals, then we can still be good, right? We can still survive. All right. How much money does that cost on the lifestyle that you have right now? Okay, let's do some math because I'm not good at math. So for us, for I think in Belize, it's something like, Cynthia, let me borrow your calculator one second. Um, most people make about two grand, two, 2,000 Belize dollars times 12. That's easy. I don't need a calculator for that. That's 24,000. All right. Times two. So that would be 48 if the two of you were working. Okay. So that's, sorry, this is like peanuts. You're talking about 48,000 Belize dollars a year for two people who are working. So if your man is making $2,000 and he's the only one that's working and there are four to five people that he has to take care of, and I know in Belize it is not free, right? School is not free. You got to pay for uniform. You got to pay for books. You got to pay for transportation. Oh, and 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 and. and. <sighs> so we're looking at twenty-four to forty-eight thousand dollars. I'm saying one paycheck less means that you have to take a significant. Mommy? Yes. There's so much hair for you. I know. Yeah. I have to. I have to vacuum again. That means that you have to take either a pay. You have to take a pay cut, have less children, or. <laughs> or. Meet a guy that is really, really rich. How many of us can really say that that is a possibility? Who's paying for everything? You? <laughs> you just had a baby. You just had two babies. So think about this. I'm glad you said that because this is... Mm, this is even the case here in Germany because technically you get state support when you have children and you get a tax class up, which means that we get we get to keep most of the money that we make. I particularly because I am um, I'm a stay at home mom and I am self employed, so I could write off a lot of things off my taxes. But you have to consider child care. All right, if I were to decide or if I were to decide to go work for a company, exactly, exactly. So you have to pay for the pampas if you get a situation like we had where <laughs> Apollonia loves when I say pampas. Like she just starts laughing. It's like I say poop or something. She's like, pampas. <laughs> yeah, her pampas cost 50 euros a month, sometimes more. That's, so that's just one thing. Then when they start eating, I don't know about y'all, but when I was breastfeeding, I ate, I still ate for two and I breastfed for three and a half years. Um, if you have kids with allergies and you have to have special food, my daughter, my other daughter still hasn't gotten her braces yet. Um, our insurance will cover it partially, I think, because I'm self-employed, but 
you got to think about the braces and then you multiply that all of those costs as all well, your tuition uniforms food for four people four to five people plus your utilities plus on and 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 that has to be covered by one to two persons if you want to do that you need to go do that in your room that's why we have more rooms in this apartment you don't have to do that here <clears throat> exactly my point so to to in Belize, you can homeschool, which can which means that you can cut the cost, right? So if you're not working, um, in order to be able to have some kind of influence on your children's education and upbringing, you can stay at home and eliminate a lot of these costs. A lot of women will be like, well, then weigh the cost of what it will cost you to have somebody else take care of your child. Um... Is Chrissy, is Chrissy still there? Oh, man. Um, yeah, so way the cost that it would cost for you to hear, if I were to go out to work, I would be going out to work just to have somebody else take care of y'all. Because to, for my daughter to go to um, preschool, kindergarten, it's 350 euros. That's... If I if I were to get like a mini job, that would be eighty five percent of what I make. So I would be working just to pay for that. Then you need baby. For those of you who want to say, okay, yeah, you guys can go both to work and then have someone, um, someone else take care of your children. Those children usually don't grow up in the best circumstance, but that is usually the case for most couples. Um, not everybody's going to meet someone who's making over $60,000 a year. Most people make about that amount. And so you can either decide raising your children and being a traditional wife is important and you can stay at home. Please bear in mind that if you opt for going to work and paying for everything, that is one of the biggest conversations that you will have within your marriage. I'm going to let that sink in. <laughs> that is one of the biggest conversations you're going to have within your marriage. Who works and who stays home with the kids? Because when it comes to parent-teachers meetings, taking the kids to and from places, kids getting sick, helping them with their homework, I never did that. My kids um, were prepped before school for school, so they learned things like how to study and you know all of those things. Um, I'm an educator, so that was pretty easy for me. So I never helped my kids with homework, well, my daughter with her homework. I know that a lot of parents do that, but it's not something that I do, and I digress. Um, I just want to say that if you opt for that, you're doing that with the idea that this is a conversation you have to have with your partner, like I said before, because it can cause a lot of arguments and um, ill ill will because what I found is that staying home was great because I got to support my children. I have a chance to support my children more, but there's still things that I'm used to, you know what I mean, that I like, that I miss doing, that I ended up starting to pressure my husband to provide and he just wasn't able to do that because he's the sole breadwinner and he has to think about things that are more important like food and <laughs> pampas and, and seasonal clothes and stuff like that. And that might seem like, oh yeah, that's that makes sense. Like that, you know. But if you if you were for these streets and you used to partying and thing, you, you it might be problematic. And the longer you stay in these streets, the more problematic it can be. Um so I was gonna also talk about like the cooking and the cleaning. I know some people are like, are you dressed? <laughs> Do you have clothes on? You can't be in here. <laughs> you have to put on clothes if you want to be in my interview. You need to be quiet before I have to come my building. Okay. Well, I'll be quiet if you do it in your room. Then you won't hear me at all. So, last point of domestics, the easy stuff, like the cooking and the cleaning 
and the washing. Talking. <laughs> Hi. Are those things easy? It really depends on who you are. And no. How, <laughs> really depends on who you are and how many children you have. Wait, so, Dad, are there any questions about sorry. that? I think that I can try, answer that. Try, try. Um, I think I can answer that. That that that's help. that's a simple simple Hi. thing. Like <laughs> the actual physical day to day cooking and cleaning, that's not a problem. Has it been a problem, Cynthia? It's an alien. She want to say yes because this yes be me. A very good question. Does traditional <laughs> woman means that you want to have kids because? Yes, you have to want to have tr traditional uh, traditional kids. <laughs> uh, no kids with cell phones. I don't want them coming out with a cell phone. <laughs> um, yes, because I have not spoken to a man, especially a man who is making over sixty thousand dollars a year, who doesn't want legacy. You, you see, you have to understand that. Men of a certain degree and caliber um, want legacy. And legacy means children. And children um, are important to men just or even more so than women. And the reason for that is because they want to have legacy. They want to pass on their name and they want to be able to say that they have had an, uh, a lineage and they're willing to make the sacrifices to go out and work. But, you know, a lot of us modern women are just too selfish. They, we think that having a child is a gift, but we have to also want children as well. There's nothing wrong with being selfish, okay? I mean, I, I understand having a child is a big, it, it is a big and a huge deal. And you don't give a man a child. You have children together um, because you're building your life together. Um, and um, I think that that was something that I also had to change my mind about was that, you know, I came into my relationship with a, a person. We were like a ready-made family. And um, I, when I married my husband, I knew that that was a duty that I had to have another child. Like that was out of the, that was just a given. Um, but it didn't happen easily. It didn't happen right away. Um, because I'm older. So if you're 30 ish and it hasn't happened yet, please know that, um, your possibilities to even getting a relationship with a man who is in this position is slowly dwindling away because we all can't be janet jackson having kids when you're 50 Ugh, yuck um but that's okay because some men come with children ready-made already um are you willing to date someone who has children um you know but it has that has to be something that is discussed from the beginning. So if you're not willing to have children, then you don't need a traditional man. The problem is, is that most of us want traditional men. We want that. We want that dough. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. We want to be flossing and we want to be looking good. <laughs> uh, uh, build a bay. <laughs> This ain't Bill the Bay. Okay, I'm riffing, and I I just realized that I'm still on YouTube, so I cannot be. This is not a mouse. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I cannot be riffing. I thought this was my mouse, but it's not. It was your brush. All right, guys. Any more questions? Any more questions, my lovely audience? Because I'm really, really gonna get back. Um, uh, I'm gonna get on YouTube and start to talk some more some more stuff no i think this is good i think this is good what is a 50 50 man <laughs> like he's 50 percent in and 50 percent out what does 50 50 mean can you describe to me what 50 50 mean
Is that like a guy who wants you to pay for stuff? Because <laughs> I don't think anybody... Do any... Uh, comment down below on YouTube. Does anybody here want any guy who they, who they have to help pay for stuff? Is that what that means? All right, I'm just going to assume that 50-50 means that you are paying for stuff and he's paying for stuff and y'all are just doing that together. So a 50-50 guy is actually... <laughs> they want you to pay for 50% of everything. Okay, first of all, that's not traditional. That's a non-traditional man. So let me just give a quick list of things that are non-traditional. He either... Um, doesn't want children or no, actually he doesn't, that's, that's not either. He does not want to have children, right? His relationship is about, I don't know, you know, companionship and traveling the world and having someone to just be with. Um, he wants a, a partner. So someone he could build a, a brand with. And those people are usually men who want to be in a 50-50 relationship. So they expect that they'll be paying for things one time and you'll be paying for things one time. I've dated guys like this and I must tell you, it is not my cup of tea. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's the moment I realized I was not a feminist because I am not. And my daughter's going to get on me about this right now because she's like, you know, you, I've, you've been in situations where you're like, you glad you had that hundred dollars <laughs> when you went somewhere with somebody because they, you know, they wanted, they did something and that they weren't supposed to do, and you were so glad to be able to in, to be able to just independently leave the situation. And let me tell you something, you. Um, have to be able to avoid those situations by knowing that the person is like that from the beginning. So are you having these kind of conversations with the, per with the person from the beginning? Hey, like, do you believe in 50-50? If you invite me out, um, does it mean that I'm paying or we're paying or something like that? I'm not going to be paying five minutes. <laughs> Here, I have some more gorka juice. So anyways... Yeah, he want you pay for 50-50. He don't want kids. Um, his his relationship with you is about building a brand. So I can drink all it? Mm-hmm. He likes career women. He likes women. It's mine. Um, okay. He likes women who are going to go out and get their job on. Maybe he, maybe his wife, his ideal woman, is like a like a psychologist or a lawyer. They tend to date these psych chicks and these, law, these women who like to argue. Oh. Women who like to play mind games, so they like that kind of stuff. I tend to stay away. From, I've I've dated guys like this. They're a pain in the ass because the level of <laughs> sorry, not sorry, the level of games, intricate levels of gaslighting and just games. They just play too many games. Like you can't get straight with them, you know. And. I prefer men to be a little bit more simple and a little less gay. I know it's not allowed for people to say the word gay anywhere anymore, but to me that's like that's not cool. It's just a lot. It's 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 the kind of stuff females do. So, um if you meet a guy who's talking about 50/50, he is not seriously interested in committing to you in a real way. Because commitment means that you're all in. And with all in, that comes with certain level. See, the problem is, is that we want traditional men, but we are not traditional women. We are not our grandmothers. I won't even go as far as to say we are our mothers because our mothers are not traditional in the sense either. Our mothers have been, you know, fed this, go get your career, go get your money, you know. And there's a reason for that too. Get your career, get your money, don't depend on any man because their experience has been that even though they may or may not have been married, the man left anyways and they were left with children that they would have to take care of until the end of time, grown ass children. And so they had to tell their daughters to have what, to have their own bread because if they didn't, 
then they would be put in a vulnerable situation like them. And it was also selfish because they didn't want to have to take care of their daughters until the end of time either. And so it was, it was kind of like a double negative, but relationships are risks. And the risk you take is cheating, abuse, um, controlling, thank you, thank you, gaslighting, and all of these things. But to me, if you're over 25 years old and you have not sought therapy or and <laughs> you have had any of those things on my list and you have not sought therapy or counseling or coaching, you're going to continue to find yourself in this cycle of taking the risk of meeting more men like that. And so that uh, that's my first recommendation. The second thing is to accept that if you want to be in a traditional, with a traditional man who's paying for everything and is, you know, this or that or the other, it's gonna be it's gonna look like a settlement. And um, the the lower your sexual marketplace value is, like the low, the less attractive you are, you know, the less fit you are, whatever the situation is, the bigger the risk you're gonna be taking, and the lower the the pool of men there is to choose from. That doesn't mean that he wouldn't be a nice man, like, or, or, or you know, he's giving it, even if it's $20,000 or $48,000, it's still all he's making that he's bringing to his home. And a lot of the times, we don't even consider that like a blessing. It's like a curse. Like, now I got to be running around and like, you know, like the fruit of the room and the same jeans from last year, and I don't get to change, you know, go shopping and go doing this. Like, are those the things that are keeping you warm at night? If you're anyone from Black African descent that is from the Americas, let me just get you with some of the statistics, okay? The staggering statistics. I have no dog in this fight. I am married to a white man. I don't fall in this category. But for those of you who do, who need to be married to your black men, one in every four of you will even get to call someone a husband. And I believe that a big part of that is the fact that we are too fucking picky. Sorry, not sorry. The rest of us will, from this from this one, right, Tessel? This one... Half of us will leave him because of the things that I just listed. He make too little money. He come to bed with his socks. I don't know. Dumb shit, you know? And then 50% of us will actually have real problems. And the problem is, is that a lot of the times, because there's only 15% of men have most of the children born in the black community. Another thing that I, I can't even get into right now, but the issue with that is that ah, out of the 50% of us who, who divorce because we f- just don't want to be married, really, is what it is, to this guy because we feel we can do better, end up divorcing and dying and end up dying alone. I'm going to let that sink in. You know, we just went through a situation where we didn't have anybody. They were finding women in their houses dead, um, who've been dead for days, weeks, months sometimes. You know, let that shit sink in. You talking about two, dollars $24,000, $48,000 just because you can't go eat out. Cook. Cook. That's what you should be doing anyways. Have a couple of kids, you know. This is what, what do you think? Well, no, you don't count. <laughs> I love you, but you don't count. <laughs> and like I said, I don't have a bone in this fight because I am married to a white man. Um, and, um, and he's great and awesome. But I had to take a hard look at all it is that I have been blessed with. And try to be a better wife. So if this man want me to try to pop out another one, I'm going to have to get the popping. Because the alternative, from the very women, by the way, who are still single. We've been married, what, no, seven years? Six? Six. Six years. Not a long time. 
Right? But when I first did what I did, moved to Germany to build a life, people were like, I would never do that for nobody. Well, how's that working out for you? You know? It's a risk. It's a risk. And um, and if you don't want to have children, which is something that, by the way, only 10% guys... <laughs> I don't even, I can't even show you because I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> yeah, just take that away. Take her and her dominoes and her cucumber juice. <laughs> um, if you don't want to get, if you don't want to have children, please honestly get into therapy and figure out why that is. Because only 10% of women of any race, anywhere, genuinely don't want to have children you may fall into that category but i feel like um you want to make sure that 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 you are in that 10 percent, or if it's just something else that is eating away at you that's making it difficult for you to get past that you know um yeah and if that is all for Instagram because I'm going to switch over to YouTube now because I could be on for longer. I'm going to see you all next Sunday. Bye! Oh, Friday. So our programs are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> Love you. Thank you so much for the questions. I really appreciate the interaction. And um, keep those comments, likes coming, y'all. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, I'm still recording. You don't want to see. You don't want to know, guys. Yeah, so, you know, is marriage for you or is it are you for these streets, you know? Cuz these streets, let me just say ooh, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. Let me just say the streets are not for everybody, y'all. I mean, how long you want to be out in here, you know? A lot of it has to do with selfishness and it's okay. It's okay to be selfish. It really is. It's not a problem. Um, um, you know, sometimes I'm here and I'm trying to like watch a, sh a episode of Law and Order or paint, and I can't do either one without being interrupted or someone eating the paint or getting it everywhere. <laughs> See what I mean? I can't even... I mean, but, you know, it is my situation. Would I change it for the world? Would I change it for something else? Probably not. I am fulfilled as a mother, and I'm fulfilled as a person, and I am fulfilled as a wife. But, let me just tell you, it is not what you think it is. If you have not been married before, I have, and I know that it's about duty, and not about what it is I think I can get. And that is something that you have to learn when you are a modern woman, because you you get into these relationships and you think that your relationship is going to be about what you can get and romance and flowers and chocolates. Those things are nice if you get them. Um, but if you don't get them, you may think that there's something wrong. And that's why a lot of marriages end because... Um, Fifty percent of marriages end because they feel like they need to. Women need to be in control or need to be given something that they're not getting out of their marriage. Um, we can talk more about that next time. But I just want to say that if you feel like you are having a, <laughs> very funny. <laughs> she gonna turn on TikTok in the middle. You tripping? You tripping? See what I mean? So, if you feel like you're not being fulfilled within your marriage, maybe, oh God, uh, how do I say this? There's no nice way to say this other than your marriage is not there to fulfill you. Your marriage is there as a duty that you make and a promise and a contract with another person to give of yourself as much as you have been given in the abilities that you have. And I really like that because I'm going to go back and listen to this video and write that down. And that is hard to do when you've been taught your whole life Disney. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Disney. White prince on a horse. I mean, a, a, a prince on a white horse coming in to save you from 
your evil mom who don't want you to go to the prom. It's such a When you get that out of your head and you can just be like, hey, boo, do you need something? How was your day? Do you need a back rub, foot rub? Hey, boo. <laughs> Are you hungry? You yeah. know? What's your... <laughs> Or, or no, I don't need anything. I just need silence. And you could just go and take your kids and lock them away. Take a sock, shove them in their mouth so it can be quiet, so you can take a nap. Then that's what you gotta do, you know. But if you come in like, why isn't he talking? Why isn't he talking to me? Why isn't he taking me on a beach? Now, <laughs> why, why haven't we smashed for forty-five minutes? Like, come on, man. Then I I really need you to do that. You need friends. <laughs> you need a life. <laughs> All right. Um, like, comment, subscribe. This has been very loose and casual, guys. And I swear <laughs> I'm going to try to do <laughs> more professional work because my YouTube channel is supposed to be professional. But now I got to go get some kids. <laughs>